Hello everyone, I'm Nabil Murad from Toronto, Canada. In this training video, I'll show you 15 tips and tricks using the mouse in Microsoft Excel. If you want to follow along, you can download the exercise file from the link below this video. In my first trick, I want to show you how to navigate to the last cell in a column or in a row, assuming that you have a huge setup so if you hover over the lower border of cell B2, the mouse pointer changes to a four-headed arrow. And if you double click, you jump to the last cell in the column. If you double click on the upper border, you jump to the top cell in the column. You can do the same to navigate right and left. So if you double click on the right border, you go to the very left. If you double click on the left border, you go to the first cell in the row. In the next step, I'll show you how to convert your mouse into a joystick. That's the easiest way of navigation in Excel. Instead of using the wheel of your mouse in either direction, so if you push down the wheel of the mouse, it changes to a four-headed arrow. If you move a little bit to the right, a black arrow detaches from the four-headed arrow. The distance between the black arrow and the four-headed arrow is like the accelerator of your car. So if you increase the distance, you increase the speed of navigation. If you reduce the distance, you are reducing the speed of navigation. You can navigate to the, uh, to the right, you can navigate down, you can navigate to the left, you can navigate up, and when you release your mouse, it turns back to a normal mouse pointer. If you want to jump to cell A1, you hit Control Home. In the next step, I have a huge setup consisting of multiple columns and multiple rows, and I would like to make more room to my work area so I'll do that by reducing the size of my ribbon. I would like to collapse my ribbon. And to collapse my ribbon, I simply double click on one of the tabs. So if you double click on the label of any tab, it collapses and it makes more room to your work area. And if you double click one more time, it expands. Alternatively, you can use the shortcut Control F1. This is a toggle shortcut. So Control F1 to expand, Control F1 to collapse and it works in all Microsoft Office applications. In my next step, I'll show you how to use the mouse to copy formatting. So in this small list, I have some regions and I have the quarterly sales. I already applied formatting to quarter one. I would like to apply the same exact formatting to the other quarters. So to do that, I'm going simply to select the source range and then double click on the format painter on the left side of the home tab when you double click, look at the mouse pointer, it changes to a brush. So if you click on uh, quarter three, you are applying the same exact formatting. If you click on quarter four, if you click on quarter two, you are applying the same exact formatting. In the next step, I'll show you how to copy a formula. And you should be familiar with that. When you create a formula, like in this example, I created a formula that calculates the profit by subtracting the cost of goods sold from the sales. And I have a formula here which calculates the profit. I would like to calculate the profit for all other transactions. And to do that, I'm going simply to hover over the lower right corner, the small square. This is called the autofill handle and simply double click and send it down. When I double click and send it down, it copies the formula, but it messes up all the formatting. I want to copy the formula and maintain the formatting. So here at the, uh, uh, I find a little options tag. And when I hover over this options tag and click, I'll be selecting fill without formatting and it re restores back the formatting. In my next step, I want to show you how to edit a formula. I have a setup which shows some employees and the quarterly sales for, or the monthly sales for each employee. So we have a commission earned and this commission is calculated by uh, summing up the sales and multiplying by commission rate. Assuming that I have a little issue with my formula, so I would like to edit this formula. If you, uh, if you look at the lower left corner, it says we are in the ready mode. I want to switch to the edit mode and I do that simply by double clicking with my mouse. When I double click with my mouse, it shows the formula in the cell and in the lower left corner, you see we are in the edit mode. And if you have any problem with your formula, it's time to correct it. Once you are done, you hit enter. Alternatively, you can put your formula in the edit mode by hitting the F2 key of your keyboard. So if you hit the F2 key, 
you bring the formula back. We call it the range finder because each set reference appears with a different color. In the next tip, I'll show you how to get help on any function. We have 461 built-in functions in Excel. If you want to get help to any function you have, so you can do that simply by double clicking to put the function in the edit mode as I showed you in the previous tip. And here, when you put the function in the edit mode, you are bringing or displaying the screen tip of that function. And if you hover over the screen tip of the function, the mouse pointer changes to a pointing finger. When you hover over the name of any function in Excel, if you are connected to the internet and click, it will automatically load help files from the office.com website, bringing all the information uh, to the function upon you clicked. Once you are done, you hit enter. In my next tip, I want to show you how to select a subset of a function. In this example, I have a list of employees and I have different regions, the quarterly sales for each employee and then the total sales. We would like to evaluate the total sales for each employee. If the employee hits the target, which is in cell A, uh, C1, we need to give a commission to that employee. But not all employees are getting the same exact commission rate. So it depends upon the region. Employees from the East region are getting 4%, West region 3.5% and so on. And to extract the commission rate, we need to use a VLOOKUP function. So in column I, I created a function uh, that uh, compares the total sales for each employee using a logical function, IF function. And then if the employee hits the target, it multiplies by the commission rate extracted with a VLOOKUP function. And I would like to calculate a subset of my function. And to do that, I'm going simply to click in the name of the function. And when I click in the name of the function, it reveals the screen tip of that function. What would you like to select? The logical test? Click in the screen tip itself. If you click on logical test, you are highlighting this part in the formula. If you want to select the value if true, click on that part and you are highlighting it in the formula. And if you wish to calculate it to see how it will, uh, what it will be returning uh, inside that function, you hit the action, will, uh, will return uh, a certain number uh, based upon the commission rate. Once I'm done, I'm going to hit OK. In my next tip, I want to show you how to control the column width by, by using your mouse. And as you already know, if you want to uh, control the column width, you select the entire column by clicking on the column letter and then you hover over the border of this column. So the mouse pointer changes to a vertical line and two opposing arrows. If you drag to the right, you are expanding the column. If you drag to the left, you are collapsing the column. And whether you expand or collapse, you will see the column width in a screen tip. But that's not exactly what I want to do. I would like to adjust the width of all the columns simultaneously in a way that each column accommodates the contents. So if I have uh, uh, more contents, I need a wider column. If I have uh, fewer contents, I need a narrower column. And in this case, I'm going to select all the columns by dragging through the column letters. And then I'm going to hover over the border of the last selected column. And when the mouse pointer changes to a vertical line and two opposing arrows, I'm going simply to double click. We call it the best fit because it adjusts each column just to auto fit the contents. In my next tip, I'll use the mouse to rename a sheet, and that's extremely easy. You simply double click on the sheet tab and then type whatever you want. I'm going to type my name and then I'll hit enter for the name to stick. In the next tip, I created a pivot table based on a huge source list and I'm summarizing uh, over 2000 rows in simply mm, few rows in a pivot table. And here I can see the sum of sales for each sales rep in each region. And if I look at the sum of sales for Jerry in the West region, I get this amount. But I would like to find out the individual transactions that created that total. I would like to extract from the source list all the individual transactions for Jerry in the West region. We call it the drill down feature. All what you need to do is to double click on that number and Excel will be creating a new sheet showing all the transactions for Sherry in the West region that generated that total in the pivot table. In my next tip, 
I want to show you how to format chart elements. So I have a small list of some sales representatives and the sales amount. And I created a chart based upon this list. Now I would like to format my chart. I would like to bring the pane on the right side that gives me the tools for formatting this chart. So if you want to format the chart area, double click on the chart border and you are bringing the format chart area. If you, uh, I'm going to close it. If you want to format like one of the series, double click on one of the series and you bring the format data series pane. And you, have, you can do that for any other element in your chart. In my next step, I'll show you a quick way using the mouse to navigating between the different sheets. So if you have four or five sheets, you can simply click on the sheets. But if you have over 150 different sheets, you need a quick way of navigation. And I'll do that by hovering over the navigation buttons on the left side of the sheet tabs. And I'm going to right click with my mouse. And when I right click with my mouse, it displays a list of all the sheet tabs available in this workbook. Double clicking on any one of them takes me right there. If I want to go back to the previous sheet, I'm going to right click and then I'm going to double click on another sheet and it takes me there. A quick way of navigation in case you have a huge number of sheets. In my next step, I have a list of names that I copied from another application, but when I pasted it into Excel, it doesn't look in a way that Excel likes. So I have some problems with the capitalization. I have some problems with the spacing. If you look at the different names, some of them are all, uh, are all lowercase, some of them are uppercase, some of them are toggle case. I have lots of problems. And to fix these names, I use two formulas, two functions combined together. So I'm going to put my one of the functions in the edit mode, and you will see that I use the proper function in combination with the trim function. The trim function removes any extra space, and the proper function capitalizes the first letter of each word, and I fix the names. But I do have a little issue. When I look at the names in the cell, I see the result of a function. But if you look at the formula bar, you will see the function itself. So it doesn't look in a way as if I typed it directly in Excel. And at the same time, there is kind of dependency between column B and column A. So if I go to column A and select it and then hit the delete key on my keyboard, I'm losing my functions in column B. What I would like to do using my mouse is to fix these two issues. I want to break the dependency between columns A and B. And at the same time, I want my names to look as if I type them in Excel directly. So I'm going to select the entire list and then I'll hover over the border of my selection. When the mouse pointer changes to a four-headed arrow, I'm going to right click, right click, not left click. And I'm going to drag my selection away and then bring it back in place while pressing the right button of my mouse. When I bring it back in place, I'm going to release my mouse. And from the menu which appears, I'm going to select copy here as values only and that should have fixed the problem. So now if I select column A and hit the delete key, uh, there is no dependency between column B and A, and my text looks as if I typed it directly into Excel. In my next step, I want to show you a functionality that we use to protect our worksheets from unintentional changes. I'm not talking about real protection by creating a password. I just want to hide my worksheets so that no one unintentionally clicks on a different sheet. And to do that, I'm going to change the size of my horizontal scroll bar. If you look at the left side of the horizontal scroll bar, you will see some ellipses. And when you hover with your mouse over these ellipses, the mouse pointer changes to a double parallel line and two opposing arrows. So when you see that mouse pointer click and drag the horizontal scroll bar all the way to the left, and you should have co uh, covered all the sheet tabs. If you want to reveal the sheet tabs one more time, you simply hover over the ellipses and double click and it will reveal all the sheet tabs. Thank you for watching. Until we meet in another tutorial, your comments are much appreciated.